Coming up on this episode of Performance TV, this is for all you pickup truck owners. Kathy has a new product from Latchelo. Saving, saving, savings. Economax shows us how. We're cleaning with foam, working on a suspension, and much more. Next on Performance TV. and welcome to Performance TV. So many pickup trucks out on the road and why do most of us have pickup trucks? We want to be able to haul items, but you want to be able to do it safely and Dennis here with Latch and Load, you have a product you're going to be able to help us utilize more of our pickup truck space and keep the load secure. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we came up with a revolutionary new tool that actually helps secure any extended load that goes over the back of your pickup. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't do any damage to your truck. You don't have to do any modifications to your truck. It just latches into your latches of the bed of your pickup on your tailgate. And away you go. You can load your stuff, strap it down, and you're on the road. Well, I, I see we have some of this already uh, assembled here. Yes. So Those, what are the different pieces? This is actually the tool that we call the latch and load, which is a tool that latches into the tailgate latches itself. Um, what we can do with this thing is basically set it down in your latch. Once you hear it click in there. It's on your truck. Simple it will not that. come off. So anything you have that can hang over the back of the pickup that you have no way to tie it down, now you have your slider hooks, a strap to strap it down, and you tighten it up, and it's on the truck. Well, we know that tailgates don't always hold themselves very well. As exactly. A matter, as a matter of fact, I've, I've seen people riding on the back and, and can be able to fall. These things aren't that strong but you've taken care of that. Yes, we've actually added another accessory that goes for the tool and it's, it's actually a strap support. And what we've done with this is we've made it to where it, it'll latch on the truck and the tool and it takes the load off the straps. But we want to make sure that's on before we put this in, correct? That's correct. So Dennis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach over here, I'm going to undo this. Pop it out. What we do then is we actually take the tool. I got mine backwards. Wrap it over the top first. Yep, wrap it over Just the top. Just kind of tilt it a little bit. And Put it on the tool itself. Set it in your pickup. You click, hear, click. You hear it latch in, and now we've taken all the load off the strap. Yeah, now you can see. I see we have some other accessories here, yes. Dennis. We actually have a, another accessory we added to it. A lot of contractors, guys who haul sheetrock heavy loads on the tailgate, and they have to put a flag on it. Sometimes it's hard to tie a flag on the sheetrock. So what we've done was come up with a tool that actually latches to it, and you can add it to where it swings out, and away you go. Oh, that's, that's perfect. And what about sometimes you need a little tool in the field? A great friend of mine told me one day, he said, hey, is there a way that we can actually mount a tool on the latching load, like a vise? And I said, well, how about we just make a vise to put on the tool? So what we've come up with is our portable vise. So all we do with this here, put it in the tool, and away you go. <laughs> Wow, you couldn't ask for something to be any more simple than that. Yeah. So these are, this would be our kit. This is our tool. Okay. These are accessories you can buy separately to put on there. You don't necessarily have to have these, but if you're going to haul a heavy load, you definitely need them. I think we have a little heavy load to put in here. We yes, already we have our, our ramps. So show me, Dennis, how our ramps go in. These are the best thing. This is a, an accessory we added to it. And now it's actually secured to the load with our adapter plates that we've made for separate ramps. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way and let's see our load go in here so we can tie it down. Now you don't have to worry about the ramps falling out the back of a pickup. You're not spending time trying to tie them off anywhere on the truck. You've latched them to the latching load so it goes in securely, it doesn't come off. You don't have to worry about falling off the back of your truck. Hey, Dennis, I see the latch and load has a nice American flag. Yes, it does. This tool is completely made right here in the United States, uh, and that was one of our goals when we actually came up with the idea was to have it built here in the United States. We want to bring jobs back to America, and that's what we're doing. Absolutely. Find out more. Just hop on their website at tailgatetiedown.com, and we'll have more for you up next here on Performance TV. This episode of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by American Car Craft, custom stainless steel accessories, Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener, Power Curve, extreme performance products, and by ARP. 
the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Performance TV. If you own a four-wheel drive truck, you want to set it apart from all the rest. One of the easiest things to do is put a set of big tires and wheels on it, but in order to do that, you need to lift it. Well, I've got a guest with me today, Kelly, from Tough Country Easy Ride Suspension. You've got kits for all kinds of vehicles. We sure do. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. This is our 25th year anniversary, and, and we, uh, we make lift kits and suspension systems and leveling kits for pretty much any vehicle you can imagine. Well, what, what sets your kit apart from all the rest? Well, what makes the most important to set us apart is we're made in the USA. We're 100% made in the USA product, and that means a lot to us, and it's very important. Um, we've been doing this a long time, and, and, and we've been on both sides of the counter, and uh, the biggest thing that we really stress when uh, doing our systems is, is uh, ease of installation, making it easy to install for the, for the do-it-yourself guy or the shop. Right. It comes with a new upper control arm, the blocks for the back, and then also parts to uh, do the strut as well. Correct. Yeah. All, all systems are different. Uh, the particular truck we're working on today is the uh, F-150. Um, and we, we've designed a uniball system for the upper control arm, which allows the vehicle to come back into factory specs as far as the alignment goes. It's done with a, instead of a ball joint, we've gone with a uniball system. And what, what after it's all installed, uh, the vehicle will have more articulation, better ride, uh, drivability, and uh, alignability. Well, we've removed all the stock suspension, and our first step will be working on the strut. And we're going to work on the strut. We're going to put it in a spring compressor. We're going to clamp it down and then remove the top of the strut. What are we going to put in here to raise it up? We're going to put it on the very uh, bottom end of the top of the uh, strut. We're going to put in a preload, aluminum preload spacer. And then on top of that, we're just going to put on a regular spacer. That will, that's how you get, accomplish your lift. All right. Well, we'll clamp it down. We're going to mark it so everything stays aligned. We, we can put it back together real easy. We'll clamp it down, remove the top, put in our spacer, remove the rubber piece, put in the spacer, put it back on, and then put the top spacer on top of the, the OEM part. Correct, yeah. And then we'll, uh, from there, we'll move on to the control arm. All right. Well, strut's all done, ready to go. Now we're ready to install on the truck. First step, not going to be the strut. It's going to be the upper control arm. Correct, yeah. We need to install the upper control arm with the uniball system. Uh, first of all, we'll need to put the uh, bushings in and grease them. Uh, if you'll take a look at the inside of this bushing, Tommy, you'll notice that they've got grooves in there. That's allowed the grease to run through it. And... Uh, Keep the suspension yeah, lubricated, you working well. Yeah, you want to always lubricate your bushings, probably as much as you change your oil. Every time you change your oil, you probably want to go grease those bushings at the same time. All right, slide that one in. We've got our bushings lubed. We're going to put the control arm in. Now, we're going to use our factory bolts, right? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and reinstall with the factory bolts. Oh, I like that. Slides Pretty right simple in. like that. Yeah, it yeah. goes right on in. Wow, that was nice and easy. Put our nuts on. Now we probably won't want to tighten this up quite no, yet. No, we like to leave everything loose when, you, uh, when you're building around, starting to put the system in, and then tighten it as you go uh, to get the proper uh, torque on the bolts. All right, now we're ready for the strut. Yeah, ready for the strut, to assemble the strut, and drop right. the uniball down on top of uh, uh, the uh, next step. We'll be dropping the uh, uniball back into the knuckle. All right, hand me that strut. Now, it comes with all new bolts for the strut because we're putting an adapter on the top. The spacer. Yeah, it comes with new bolts for the top of the spacer. Then you all use right. the OE bolt on the bottom. All right, you slide it up in there and I'll put the nuts on. I'll hold this up out of your way. All right. Put the washer on and get a nut so it'll hold it in place for you. All nylon lock nuts, so we don't have to worry about lock tightening. Yeah. It just makes it simpler the end user. All right, we got the top in. Now we're gonna put the bottom in. Yeah, got the top half in. Now just gotta get this strut. I'm gonna make this a little easier and try to persuade it in there a little bit. You got the bolt. Yes, sir. All right. We should take care of that. All right, a couple more steps and we got this thing ready to go. Yeah, we're getting close. Just gotta reassemble the uh, sway bar there and then right. the uh, half shafts here. Okay, we got the front all finished up. Now we need to do the rear. What's it going to take to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Front's all buttoned up. We're ready to go. We're just, oh, it's real simple. We're basically replacing the, replacing the stock block with a custom uh, double pin rear block and U bolt and uh, rear shocks, and we're done. Oh, man. It goes right in, falls in, puts U bolts in. We're good to go. Real simple. Once again, easy installation. We're going to take a break. We'll have more performance TV right after this. Time now for the OPGI restoration tip with George Lopez. 
So here at Ritual Parts Group, we specialize in GM vehicles. Here we have a typical headlight switch. This part is very typical and very similar for everything from the late 50s all the way to the early 80s. Um, our biggest issue is when we have customers call in, they do not know how to replace their headlight knob or don't know how to remove it or install the new one when they're working on their restoration. It's a simple trick. It does not require any tools, and I'll show you this right now. As this part is installed in your dash, all you have to do is reach under there and feel for this plunger release button. This is the secret to releasing the headlight knob. Now the trick is you pull the knob as far as you can out until it stops. Press the plunger down and pull the rod out. Now to reverse it, you don't even have to press the button anymore. All you do is put the rod in and push it until it clicks and it's locked in place. It's that simple. One of the easiest things you could do to your dash to improve the looks of it and to uh, say you did something on your car that day. For more information on parts like this and thousands of more parts, visit our website at opgi.com. Performance TV, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. How many times have you got your car all dirty and muddy and just know how long it's going to take to get all that off and all the hard work of scrubbing and trying to get all the dirt off? We've got something today that's going to make that job simple. I'm with Ron from Foam Power. You've got a product that will take all this dirt and mud off of it with real ease. Well, Tommy, that's the idea. What we want to have happen is to have the process of the foamer and the, and the chemistry do the heavy lifting you know, for the drivers, for their crews. and cut down the amount of time they spend at the car washes or working on their car haulers and gets them more sleep, saves them some money because of the way the process works and all in all it's just a win-win for them. It's going to make it look good as well. Well absolutely, <laughs> that's what it's all about, it's all about brand, right? Ron, where can I get foam power? Well right now we're working on building a distributorship market uh, across the country. We have them out east, down south, uh, in the Midwest, but you can find those locations at www.foam powercleaner.com. We look for them there because you can save on shipping by buying from somebody in your area. Now how, how does this work? Tell me a little bit about how does it work? Well what happens is we have various types of equipment here that is designed to take the cleaning chemistry uh, and turn into a foam and then the chemistry is engineered such that it has the right chemical composition that the two things together create kind of a shaving cream type of a foam. The beauty of that is that then it sticks it stays put. It gives you the dwell time yeah, on whatever it is. Off like a liquid. Exactly. You, you spray and watch it head for the ground. You spray and it stays, and the chemical starts working and keep working. And then you get a, an area of your thing foamed, and then you can come back. And sometimes you need to brush. Sometimes not. Uh, knock some spray it off. off. And, knock yep, the big clumps off. Spray it off, off and all, yeah. But we always knock the. You know, I can show you this. We always knock the the big clumps off right away because you want your chemistry to be able to get to. Uh, what it is you're trying to clean. All right. And um, you don't want to spend a huge amount of time in this, because again, we're talking all right, about, it's all it about saving time. That's right. But you want to get rid of some of the heavy stuff so that your chemistry gets down to what you want it to be spending its time cleaning. So you just, and we'll just knock it off quick here. And you don't want to spend a lot of time with right. this. Now, when you apply the the foam. How long is, is there yet to let it set or how long do we yeah, want Yeah, you set? let it set for three to five minutes. All right. Uh, with the idea that um, it's working, you'll see actually when we do this, you'll see the foam start right, well, to turn. Let's spray it. Let's spray it. Let start it set. to turn brown. We, we did a little test up here on the front and man, you can see how good that works and how good that front wheel looks. I can't wait to see what it does for the back. As simple as that, just spray it on, That's let it, it set. Spray it in, let it sit. And you can see how it sticks. It doesn't run off. The foam actually sticks to the tire. Yeah, what's on the ground is really only the overspray from, from this. Not anything much running off. A little right. bit where it got heavier there. So. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a couple minutes. And you have all size sprayers for different type of jobs. You know, big jobs, little jobs, handheld. Absolutely. Well, we got a couple handhelds here. Uh, the 2L10X. This is you great. Pump it up on just, the go. Yeah, just pump it up like so. You're and you foam. Go. Right. And the, uh, this one is nice, uh, particularly for a larger job that you're going to have a lot of angles. Because of the pump, this one doesn't yeah, like you can't the get in there. This with its the wand, belly. you can get in. Here with the wand, you can go in any direction right. you want to go with. And again, both of these, you just pump up by hand. 
Um, we've then got, got square then you got, the, then you got the big one here. Oh, yeah. The That's big for the one, big job. You yeah. get a lot of dirt, a lot of mud, this is what you need. This is great for their shops, for the right. guys who don't wash at the car wash at the track or this type of thing, or for their big haulers. This does a very, very nice job. It's driven by compressed air. You just plug it in, you're ready to go, don't need any electricity, and you'll get huge volume, volumes of, of foam out of this. All right, well, let's, let's hose this thing off and see where we're at. You can see how brown the, the foam was already yeah. by what it had loosened up. I like anything. I don't have to use the brush and scrub. <laughs> well, see, we talked about saving time. Uh, Wayne Johnson, sprint car driver out of Knoxville, uh, he and I spent time together out to the Knoxville Nationals. And he said that using, and he was just using the five liter here in the car wash, it took him half the amount of time it normally takes to wash his vehicle. And he said, you know, as nice as that is, because it saves you, saves you money, which this does too, the foam is ten, nine tenths air. So Man, that, you don't go through as nearly as much chemical. That looks easy. Right. I mean, I don't know about you, I'm gonna clean my car, I wanna do it really fast, really easy. Ron's got a lot more clean on this thing. We'll be right back after this, more performance. This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Stinger Trailer, Folding Motorcycle Trailer, Top Gun Customs, 4x4 Suspension Specialists, Magic Creeper, Ready Rain or Shine, and by Steel Rubber, Quality Crafted Rubber Parts and Weather Stripping. It's a 1936 Ford pickup truck. We picked it up in Mississippi and I actually drove the truck down there before we bought it. And uh, we lucked out, it's got a 49 Mercury engine in it instead of the original 36 for a little more horsepower. It's up to 165 from, I think it was 105, something like that original, but uh, runs very nice. The biggest challenge was the front grill. It's all one piece, the center of the grill and the side shells and ours was, had been smashed. They came with the truck, and trying to find one with a, all the fins still in the grill, but so many of them were just smashed through the middle, and nobody makes them. The owner did not want a big pod hanging down with all the controls in them. He didn't have much left of a glove box, so we opted to put the switches in there, so he didn't have a pod hanging down showing everybody you did have air. I'd do another one. I mean, we've done LS engines with uh, fuel injection. Uh, this is just as much fun. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know, something that all of us think about no matter what we drive, and that is fuel economy, savings, and hey, the environment as well. We have Brian here with us from Economax. Brian, yes. you've come up with something that looks so relatively simple here. And it's a simple principle behind it, but it really does big things. Yes, it does, Kathy. It's a little device called Economax that slips into your air intake hose. By utilizing a Venturi and a Vortec, we change the angular velocity. We put more air into the combustion chamber so we can burn the waste of fuel to create horsepower, torque, cleaner emissions and better fuel consumption. Now this kind of got started from your background in racing, didn't it? Yeah, I uh, did a bit of racing in my day. I don't want to say how old I am, but uh, um, down the drag strip, folks are using turbochargers, superchargers and blowers. And I go, well, we can actually change the angular velocity by using a bit of science. And Brian, I see that you have different sizes here for different applications. That is correct, yes. We have three different sizes. Basically, uh, for small automobiles, it's a friction fit, whether it's a two and a half, a three inch, or a three and a half inch. And then we go into pinning them if they're a little bit larger. Okay, what are the other two that we have back uh, here? A large automobile uh, manufacturer has uh, utilized our technology to enhance fuel consumption in their vehicles. So they are using my uh, kind of concept to get that better mileage. 
But you, you've done some testing, which folks can check out on, on your website, on economax.com, yep. to see the difference between theirs and yours and how much more yours is actually uh, uh, saving fuel and even helping to protect the environment. Yes, actually, uh, we replaced the manufacturer's uh, rendition, and uh, we put ours in, and 15% uh, better fuel consumption, 13% greenhouse gases reduction. Wow. Considerable. Well, you, and there's just a, such a small piece. Can you show us how to put one in? Yeah, basically on this vehicle, it's, it's simple. We take our uh, flat screwdriver, we undo the, uh, the throttle body, the clamp, and we do the, uh, the air box, the clamp, and it just kind of comes off. I did this beforehand. And we take our unit on sizing wise. I have one, take this one here. Take the small end, always goes towards the engine, and place the product in the hose just so it's in there snug and straight. Does it need to be back a certain distance or uh, anything? For maximum fuel efficiency, we put it right at the air filter box. If you're a hardcore drag racer, we put it right at the throat. And the difference is, as you'll notice the horsepower at 3,000 RPMs at the air filter box, you put it right at its throat, the horsepower will kick in at 1,000 RPMs. Basically, the product is installed in this here application. You just put the product back onto the throttle body, place it back onto your air box. Now, does it matter if you have a cold air intake or if just the stock air intake? A, a uh, cold air intake, we, uh, we're, we're getting the same efficiencies. Um, basically, it doesn't matter what combustion engine it is. If it has an air box hosing going to a throttle body or carburetor, we work very well on carburetors too. Doesn't matter if you're four-cylinder, six-cylinder, V8? No, it is not. Uh, basically, because the four, sixes, and eights are the smaller type of engines, uh, they're the friction fit application as where your two and a half, three, three and a half, you take the product, the small end goes in, you push it into the hose, you put the hose back onto your air filter box and you're done. Well, Brian, such a simple product and, a, and an idea doing such big things. And folks, if you want to find out more, you just hop on their website. And that's all we have time for this week here on Performance TV. We'll see you next time around.